What's happening, folks? I asked the fans who would be the first player they take in free agency and then the first player they take in the draft. Y'all won't believe who they picked. I'll tell you right now on this edition of Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Duval, and everybody else from around the country that love the Jacksonville Jaguars? Welcome to the Locked On Jaguars podcast. I'm the host of said podcast. My name is Tony Wiggins, and it's your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. You can find us on YouTube at the Locked On Jaguars page also. All you got to do is go over there, tap in, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and then hit the bell so that you receive notifications each and every time we drop an episode. And then wherever you see your audio or listen to your audio podcast every single day, make sure you tap in so you don't miss an episode on whatever platform that is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Shout out to the everydayers who keep showing up every single day. Let me know that they're everydayers and you can be a part of that group. All you got to do is tune in every day and you're an everyday or two. All right. Hello, mama. My mama watches my podcast. How you doing? I love you. I'm sorry you call me sometimes and I can't talk because I'm doing the podcast and I'm answering all of your questions on the podcast. In fact, shout out all the mamas who watch my podcast every single day. We appreciate y'all too. Here's what we're going to talk about. If your son is a football player and he plays for the Jaguars or he's a free agent, we might be talking about your son today. All right. Because we're talking about player procurement. I did a poll where I asked fans their wish list. Who do you want the Jaguars to select? Who would be your first player in free agency? And who would be your first player in the draft? Some interesting names, I'll get to it. I can tell you this, though. The first name that they mentioned in free agency, they didn't even mention two or three days ago because they didn't know he was going to be there. But they're mentioning him now, and it's peculiar that they're mentioning him over somebody else. So we'll get back to that. I want to paint a picture. I want to paint a picture of positivity and what might be reality, right? The positivity comes from if everything goes well, what can the Jags do? The reality that might set in for you is something totally different. And I'll tell you about that, too. Top five players. Who are the Jaguars' top five players on their roster today? Who could they inevitably inevitably be? Thank you. I'm glad I took that extra V out. Inevitably be once I believe the free agency cycle is over. I do not think a rookie is going to be in their top five picks. He shouldn't be at this point. Unless they move up, which is something I would not do. So let's get into it. I had to catch my breath real quick, but let's just get into it here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day. And we always thank you for making us your first listen. Um, I put out a poll on social media and I asked the fans. I asked the fans this question. If you could start this team, start this free agency cycle or this player procurement cycle where you're going to have free agency and then you're going to have the draft, with no trades, who's it going to be? I left it wide open. So let me tell you the main name that came up in the draft. The main name that came up in the draft was wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. A close second was cornerback Quinion Mitchell. I got a strange feeling Mitchell ain't going to be there, right? But I like both of those selections because, and, and I give Jaguar fans credit, you wouldn't know this, right? When you see me online, sometimes it seems like I'm beefing with people. No, 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 no. Well, let me know. No, sometimes I am, right? But other times, and I tell people this all the time, I try to be the person that engages with everybody. If I start going back and forth with you, it's only because I'm disappointed. It's not because I don't like you. It's not because I don't want people to pay attention. It's not because I'm being snarky like some of the other people that I really, really like, and they're too smart snarky for me. 
and it bothers me because I'm like a, almost 55 years old and I got these dudes online being all snarky when I'm really a big fan, right? So I don't want to ever be that guy. But the the one the people that I don't want to, to think that I'm being mean are the people that I kind of go back and forth with. I'm just trying to push you to think a little bit better or think more and not always have the gotcha answer for everything, right? So we'll get back to this. Our fans are really, really smart. Our fans see a big picture that they've never experienced for the majority. Because I was really expecting the fantasy football answers. I was really expecting the, well, that ain't going to happen. Like somebody, somebody, I'll give you an example. Somebody said, trade 17 next year's first and the second round pick and go get Marvin Harrison Jr. Look, man, I love the enthusiasm, but I ain't doing that. I'm not ruining my team to go up and get the guy that's probably the best non-quarterback in the draft, but still you can't leave yourself out there butt naked like that for just being able to go get one guy who's going to help Trevor, who's going to be really, really talented. I think from the day he steps in the league, he's top 15. I believe once he works his way through some kinks and understands how things go, he'll be top 10. And then probably by year, the middle of year two, we're talking about him maybe being top five, right? That's what I feel about Marvin Harrison Jr. Because some guys are going to get older. And I just think he is prepared for this. Look no further than his name, that he's going to be prepared for the NFL and the school he played at in, in college. So fans are really, really smart. Brian Thomas Jr. and Quinion Mitchell are not the sexiest choices, but they're very good choices for this football team. They have athletic profile. They are guys that are not going to be mismatched against most people once they get their feet wet in the National Football League. So I do like that a, a, a lot. In free agency, the player that the fans chose, I don't think he's the best player that's going to be available. And we need to define the word available, right? I mean, he won't have a tag on him. He won't be under contract. I don't think Christian Wilkins, who the fans picked, is better than Chris Jones, and I don't think there's anybody out there that does. He is 26 as opposed to Chris Jones being 30. Chris Jones doesn't seem like he's slowing down any. So it, it, it tripped me out when the fans unanimously chose Chris Jones as the guy that they wanted. I think some people overthought it, and they took, they took uh, Jeffrey Okuda. Okuda's not a, an, an A-list free agent. So while I appreciate the fans thinking in depth like that, I didn't want that. I wanted something. I wanted a big name. I wanted I wanted a guy that's going to set the template for this team and be a lights out starter where I think Akuda is going to come in and compete for uh, playing time. Like if they drafted Quinion Mitchell, Akuda might have to play the slot because Tyson Campbell's on the other side, who I think they're trying to extend. So a bit surprised, but I get it. I understand. Fans are thinking for six, seven years, and they believe Chris Jones might not be available that long. And then some people say, well, even though he's, a, he's not a free agent, if they trade LeJerry Sneed, he, they're going to re-sign him. They're not going to let him go. But that's not the question. The question is, who would you, who, who's going to be free that you go after? My first one is Chris Jones. My second one is Christian Wilkins. Because I think they help your team right away at a, at a hard spot where it's uh, very, very difficult to obtain talent. and um, I just think they add something different. Now, folks want to see Trayvon move inside sometimes to that that 4B or that 5 technique. Have at it with Christian Wilkins and Devon Hamilton because you have enough beef in the middle. Active beef, not Fody Falikazi, who's who was always hurt. Shout out to Fody. It was his birthday the other day, and they released him on his birthday. That's After wishing him happy birthday, that's some wild stuff. But anyway, I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to paint a picture of what if. What if they get this guy and don't get this guy? And who, who will they be targeting in the draft? Some what if players. And I'm going to also name somebody who I believe is a fourth round steal. And looking at all the information, I think he'll probably be there. So I'll talk about that player as well. And we're going to do all of that here in segment two on Locked on Jaguars. I got to let you know about FanDuel. Today's show is sponsored by FanDuel, and I couldn't be happier, man, because FanDuel is the absolute real deal. Football season ended, but guess what? Basketball season is in full swing in the NBA. 
I'm telling you, man, I had a team last night up by 18 points and they lost. And I wanted to, it was Sacramento. Sacramento gave up the lead and lost to Chicago. And I wanted to fall off the bed, but that's what happens. Maybe if I had paid attention a little bit more to the news and notes on FanDuel, I would have got it. And you can get it too. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. All right, moving right along here. Locked on Jaguars. We're at your team every day. We thank you for making us. Your first listen all the time. I got another listen for you. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Okay, so... We talked about who the fans said that they wanted. It was Christian Wilkins uh, as the veteran and almost a toss-up between Quinion Mitchell, but the winner was Brian Thomas Jr. So the fans have – they hit, they hit, they played the hits, man. You need a defensive tackle. You need an interior defensive lineman for some pass rush and to be able to stop the run. You need a, a shutdown, young cover corner uh, to play man-to-man in Ryan Nielsen's defense. And they need a big t- a big time wide receiver with a lot of speed and a and a nice big catch radius. And what I like about it is everyone knows Brian is a little raw, right? Brian Thomas Jr. But fans see the big picture. They think maybe a year or two down the line, much like Trayvon, that he's gonna be one of the best in the league. It is and by the way, Trayvon is, I believe, the best run stopping edge in the, in the NFL. And he's a gang wrecker. I've had multiple people. Coaches and scouts included tell me that other coaches and scouts have told them that and said, look, it's not sexy, but that dude is something else. You even heard Mike Tomlin. In fact, one person told me Mike Tomlin said this to him. Mike also said it at the podium, said he's a game wrecker. You had 10 sacks to boot and maybe six more that he that he had his hands on and he could have gotten them. I think he's going to have a huge, huge year. So it doesn't take long for these things to pay off. Right. It, it, it just doesn't. It doesn't take a, a, a too long of a time for these things to pay off. You just got to be a little bit patient, right? So what I want to do now is paint a picture. Like, what if? What if they make a big pitch for Christian Wilkins? Now, mind you, if they get Christian Wilkins, this means, in my opinion, that they did not retain Calvin Ridley. And there are people now that are saying, the hell with it. If Ridley hits the market and you can get him, go ahead and get him. Or if Ridley hits the market, go ahead and make a trade with that second round pick and maybe some change in the future and get LeJarrius Sneed. So now you can use your first round pick on something else, right? They would have to do more restructuring than they, than they have now because you still need about $10 million to draft your draft class. They have roughly about $19 million and some change to work with right now. Now, granted, the key in this is to get Josh Allen, get that $24 million cap hit off of him. That's the franchise tag. Work a deal out with him where you're sitting at about anywhere between 10 and $12 million for his first year cap. We've explained how that works. The annual uh, per year average has absolutely nothing to do with salary cap. You can have $20 million on the salary cap and you can sign a guy for $30 million annually. All you got to do is just structure it a certain way give them a signing bonus, have them have a small year, first year salary, and the rest of that is amortized over the life of the contract. It's easy. So you can sign a guy who averages $25 million per year on his deal, but he's only making, he's only about 10 to $12 million in cap space. But they still would need a little more. So let's just say they make a deal with Josh, get Josh signed to a long-term deal. Now they can sign two guys. If they go and they're able to get Christian Wilkins, and his cap number will probably be somewhere near the same that Josh is. They get Christian Wilkins, which means they they may move on from somebody else. I know they re-signed Roy Roy Robinson Harris and and, uh, 
that's whose spot Christian would take. He'd be at a three technique. That's where he'd play, even though he could do everything. But for me, that's where he's going, okay? He's going right there. Um, then I would still be looking to add another player on that defensive line uh, and use Adam Gosses as depth piece, and now I have another starter. So you have Roy Robinson Harris and Adam Gosses as your backups because I'd have Devon Hamilton, Christian Wilkins, and I'd still go either on the, on the veteran market, whether it's a guy like Danico Autry. I, I probably wouldn't put Trayvon there. I was just telling you, you know, that's what you, you have an option of doing. But if they're going to run a four-man front, it doesn't matter because you have Josh Allen and Trayvon. So there you go. You got a four-man front with Wilkins and uh, Devon Hamilton, and that's very, very good because now you have four players that play the run very well, right? If you do that, you almost have to go wide receiver or offensive line. In fact, there's a little bit of sentiment that if you're able to get Christian Wilkins and LeJerry Sneed, what I do is I just drop back in the first round, regardless of who's there. I would get more picks. I would replenish those picks. You'd have to give up a two for Sneed. You're going to lose your three with Ridley. You have the compensatory pick that you cannot trade, and you'd still have your fourth round pick, right? Maybe Sneed costs you the two and the four if Kansas City doesn't want to get off uh, or if they want all their compensation this season. And the Jaguars will be operating at a little bit of a dis disadvantage because some of the other teams, like the Titans, they pick high in the second round. The Jaguars pick in the middle of the second round. So there's a way around it. You give them a two and a four this year and maybe some change from next year and you can get the Jerry Sneed. Now, you still got to pay him. So there's three guys that you swung for. But those, you retained your own guy. You got the Jerry Sneed to go to play opposite Tyson Campbell. And then you got Christian Wilkins. That defense looks better, especially with the scheme change, right? You set at safety. You committed at linebacker to those guys. You can rework Foyle, little kind of deal, stretch him out some and lower his cap hit. So now what you could do is you could focus on the offense. If you move back, you'll get two, you know, two, two bites at the apple, maybe in the second round or late in the first and then one late in the second. Like if, say, a team like KC wants to move up from 32, you can take 32 and 64, give them 17. And you still have that compensatory pick in the third round. So all you're now missing is a fourth round pick, right? And then once you back up, there's a Donna Mitchell, there's Keon Coleman. If you have the similar grade on them or if you think they're in the neighborhood where Brian Thomas is, and then you can swing right back around in the middle of, well, not the middle, but towards the end of the second round, and you can see who's still sitting there, whether it's Cedric Van Pran if, you, if, you, if you're not able to, to go out and, and get a center, whether it's Frazier from West Virginia if you're trying to get a center, or – just the best offensive lineman available. Maybe it's Christian Mahogany or uh, Cooper Beebe, one of those big guys that could infuse some young, big, burly talent into that, into that offensive line. You can then come back in the fourth round because you'll probably need another receiver, right? Depending on what you do with Zay Jones. Now, everybody and their brother knows that I have raved about this receiving class. One of the things I would love for them to do is just add speed, playmaking, just an injection of youth because you never know down the line what you're going to do with Zay Jones and Christian Kirk, right? So if they address the receiver position in the first round, I wouldn't mind them doubling back in a year where the receivers – are really, really deep and go in and get Javon Baker, who will give you a different type of body type. So if you if you go in the first round and you get one of these six foot four guys, they're, they're going to be your X receiver. Right? So what about your other guy? What about your flanker? What about your other guy? Right? Or your split end? What, what about uh, your Keenan McCardell to those guys moving forward? Javon Baker's a playmaker. 6'1", 208 pounds, fourth round. That's probably where I would lay my hat down, and that's probably what I would do. I would go in that direction. And I forgot about the compensatory third-round pick. Um, that's an edge depth pick if they don't go out and pick up somebody like Dorrance Armstrong to be the third in, a guy who I think has a lot of value because he also plays special teams in Dallas. I think you can get him for $7.5, $8 million a year. They paid Smoot six and a half last year. You have to up that a bit because of the uh, special teams' ability of the young man, but I think that'll be good. So I just painted a, a positive picture 
uh, what could happen. I'm going to paint a negative picture, but then I'm also going to tell you who the Jags' top five players are on their team, and is that, is that good enough uh, to stand up league-wide, especially against the playoff teams? I'll tell you all that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars in segment three. Today's show is sponsored by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patient. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die vehicle alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for, and with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S customers third final segment here on locked on jaguars with your team every day we thank you for making us your first listen first segment tell you who the fans want the fans want christian wilkins and brian thomas jr and maybe even little quinny mitchell right Talked about painting a picture of good and bad. I did the good and i'm gonna do the bad for you before i get to the top five jaguars and you can determine if those five players are good enough to stand up to the rest of the league. The bad part. Here's the bad part. The Jaguars strike out on all the big name free agents. They get outbid for Legereus Sneed and others. They end up having to, they lose Calvin Ridley. So they have to go the secondary route to try to fill in their roster. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it does. It sounds like something they did like two years ago. You know, in, instead of getting the big names that they wanted in here, they went and got the other guys. They went and got Jihad. They went and got Hadi and, and those dudes. And they they went and got Shaq Griffin. And they, they, they ended up getting people that, well, they just didn't keep them for a long period of time. And, and those are those moving parts that we – always dislike so much you're gonna see if they don't if they miss out and they strike out you're gonna see some kj osborne's roll up in here shout out to kj osborne i am not playing with your name man i know you're gonna get a deal somewhere between four six million bucks and, and, and you will work hard good guy for the room blue guy that's fine but they'll still need a whole lot more right what else are they? Who else are they? Maybe they re-signed Ezra Cleveland. Somebody told me today they think they're going to run it back with their whole offensive line. As much as they talk about it, I think they're going to run it back too because of the way they sound. If they do go out and get a veteran center, it'll be a journeyman because they do want Luke Fortner to win. They want him to win the job. He's their guy. That's how Trent rolls. Trent wants his people to win jobs. And then they might have to pull back if they don't get a Christian Wilkins. It'll be Sheldon Rankins. So you get Sheldon Rankins, K.J. Osborne, and then they'll spin this thing and tell you, and then maybe they go after Steve Nelson, right, to try to hurt who can play the slot or the outside, you know, as a two-year fix. Somebody, and Steve Nelson's a real good player, and it'll hurt the Texans a little bit, but come on, man, that ain't what the fans want. The fans don't want that. These fans want stars, Right? They want stars because if they don't get them, their five best players are going to be people that's already on the team. So I'll tell you who they are right now. So if the bad happens and the Jaguars don't get one or two stars up top, here's your top five players. And they're all going to be familiar because they're already on the team. It'll be Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen, if he comes back, which he, he's going to because he's got the tag. Trayvon Walker. That's a decent top three. Fine. You got a quarterback. You got your two edge rushers. Anton Harrison, your right tackle, would be your other best player on the team. And for me, it's probably Foy Olivacan because he's been more available than Andre Sisco, who I have at number six. So those are 
five really, really good players, even if you put Cisco in for Olu Okran. That's five nice pieces, right? You're ascending quarterback who's going to have a bounce back year without the injuries. You think with a little bit more continuity in offensive line, things will work. Josh Allen, if he gets if he gets a long term extension, he's going to get paid. Even if he doesn't, he's got twenty four million. But I'd like to see them show him some appreciation. Trayvon Walker, ascending, might really break through this year and have a great year. Anton Harrison, I think, is a future superstar. Has a chance to be the second, maybe the third best offensive lineman to ever play here. You know, I'm talking about Baselli and Cersei. So right after that, he has a chance. He has, if he avoids injury, he's got a shot to be like a household name. And then for Ulu Khan, who's like led the league in tackles for 75 years in a row, Andre Sisko is ascending. You can't tell me after that interception he had last year against Kansas City in the first quarter that you didn't think he was going to be a star. The thing is, he's had to cover so much ground with the way he plays. He, he, he He's not quite Jonathan Abrams like where he hurts himself, hurting, hitting people, but he does have to do a lot of stuff. If they get better up front, then he won't have as much wear and tear because he ain't coming down. He'll bust the people in the face all the time. So my thing is those are five really, really good players. You could be a lot worse. The Jaguars have been a lot worse over the years. How does that stack up against the other teams? In my mind, it stacks up in the second half. It's not top 15. It's not 20 and beyond. I think it's 15, 16, 17. If you really look at the five best players from other ball clubs, to me, that's not good enough. That's why I'd rather them sign two free agents outside of Josh Allen restructuring if they get LeJarrius Sneed and if they get – now, if Calvin Ridley comes back, Ridley is probably the fifth best player on this team. If they get LeJarrius Sneed and Christian Wilkins, both of those guys are in the top five. Now you're trying to figure out who we're pushing out. Are we pushing out Trayvon or are we pushing out Anton Harrison? That's when you're cooking with grease, when you can't – identify five guys when you when you when it's real painstaking for you you say man can i name seven because you want to get these guys in so bad that's when you know you're cooking with grease so that's what free agency means to to this team when you can go into the draft and take a guy 17th overall and that guy's like the eighth ninth or tenth best player on your team and maybe after his first year, if he's a young wide receiver, he proves that he's better than that. That's kind of where you need to be. So they aren't that far off. But this depends on Trent Baalke to get a long-term deal done with Josh Allen in time, for them to have the salary cap space, for them to now go after these other players. And last but not least, all the talk last year was about an edge rusher. They never got it. They had a duo that led the league in sacks for a duo. Nobody's asking for an edge rusher this year. Everybody wanted a center. The second Christian Wilkins and LeJarrius Sneed's names were out there as names that could be available. When I did that exercise yesterday, no one put an edge rusher down, whether it's free agency or the draft, because now they believe in the two that they have. Or they believe that we're committed to those two guys. We need edge depth, but no one's mentioning it, mentioning mentioning that stuff. This is why I told you things will change when you look up and see what's there. Anybody can say, oh, we need this or we need that. It's not there. There are no receivers. Calvin Ridley's the hottest receiver in free agency, and I don't think they're going to bring him back because I think he's going to go out here and somebody's going to offer him a boatload of money. You notice how the Jaguars don't do what you want them to do. And a year later, they still hadn't done it, but you're not asking for the same thing. Because you know what? The pipe in the bathroom fixed itself, and now the one in the kitchen is broken. And this is where they have to get to. They have to get to the point where everything's fixed, everything in the house is functional. They can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. The only way you do that is planning and getting ahead of it. If you're constantly chasing this thing where it looks like the Jaguars always are, you'll never, ever, ever have the continuity you need. You got the continuity you need here on Locked On Jaguars because that's just who we are, man. 
it's your team every day and every day means continuity and that's exactly what it is make sure you tap in and find the locked on jaguars podcast on youtube or on the platform where you listen to your podcast and show up again tomorrow that'll make you an every day do that for me and i promise i'll deliver the content that you want until then you guys take care of yourselves bye mama we'll see you guys here on locked on jaguars